family. Movies brief here. Today, I am going to explain a Korean thriller film called Everyone Is There. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Lisa is a timid and shy 16-year-old. In the opening scene, she is running down a hill in the middle of the woods. Her clothes are torn and her face is covered in injuries. Suddenly, she trips on a stair and falls several feet below. With her remaining strength, she begs someone for help and falls unconscious. In the following scene, Lisa is in the hospital. The severity of her injuries is clearly visible in broad daylight. Fortunately, a bypasser found her in the woods and brought her to the hospital. Outside, two police officers are discussing the case. Judging by the previous bullying reports, the cops are sure that Lisa was bullied by the girls of her school. But before advancing the case, they will have to get an official statement from Lisa. They have also tried to contact Lisa's parents, but it turns out that her mother died a few years ago, and her father is overseas. He is not involved in her life and doesn't care even if she dies. When she regains consciousness, the head police detective, Mr. Kim, introduces himself. He asks her several questions about her health and the incident that happened yesterday, but Lisa remains quiet throughout the interrogation. They are interrupted by her homeroom teacher, Miss Lee. She urges the officer to go away and let the girl rest for a while. Malice is clear in her intention when she tries to stop Lisa from giving away who actually did this to her. Mr. Kim then notices three middle-aged women in the doorway. They are the mothers of the girls who are suspected of bullying Lisa. He figures that they want to threaten Lisa or bribe her into not saying anything. He asks them to go away since they are legally not allowed to meet the victim, but the women are persistent. Their husbands are people with power and money, which makes them believe their daughters can get away with anything. Mr. Kim states that their daughters were the ones who called Lisa to the mountain, but the mothers nonchalantly claim that the girls were just hanging out. When the argument gets heated, Lisa asks them to go away because she wants to rest. After the incident, the homeroom teacher, Miss Lee, meets the school principal. Both of them know very well that Lisa was bullied. To save the school's reputation, the principal wants Miss Lee to transfer Lisa to another school when she returns. He hides his corruption by pretending to be worried about the bully's future. A few weeks later, Lisa recovers from the injuries and can finally walk around. Mr. Kim has tried to ask her about the incident several times in the past week, but Lisa has yet to break her silence. Due to lack of proper evidence, the case is handed to some counseling guidance teacher and the bullies are let free again. One night, Lisa lets negative thoughts get the best of her. She tries to commit the unthinkable, but has to stop when a lady walks into her room. The lady is the counseling guidance teacher, Miss So Me. So Me has seen a lot of students like Lisa and helped them live after being traumatized by similar incidents. She isn't like any normal guidance teacher. She was also bullied in school and knows how it feels to be weak. Hence, she helps her students take revenge on the bullies. Initially, she doesn't seem to feel sorry for Lisa. She makes her remember the events of the night, which in turn makes Lisa break down crying. When she calms down, Somi asks her to stay alive until she returns again. On the day Lisa is being discharged, she is visited by the leader of the bullies, Nayeon. She has brought her new school uniform, knowing that her old one is torn. The girl shows no remorse for almost killing Lisa and tells her she is better off dead. Before leaving, she also threatens her to stay away from the police. After she leaves, So Me enters the room. Having heard the entire conversation, she brings Lisa to her house and helps her settle in. After that, Lisa goes to the neighborhood where her mother used to live. Before her death, she is reminiscing about her past when a passerby catches her attention. She follows the girl and soon finds out that she is her identical twin, Jenny. Lisa tries to reunite with her, but Jenny walks away, uninterested. It is revealed that the girl's parents got divorced before they were born. The couple was not on good terms, so the father never wanted anything to do with Lisa and Jenny. But with time, the mother's financial condition got weaker. Hence, she left Lisa at her father's home and started living with Jenny. The sisters never met after the incident, and Lisa had to live with her father, who thought of her as a burden. The next day, So Me follows Jenny to a convenience store and notices her shoplifting. She stops her outside and asks her for help. Even when told that her sister was almost bullied to death, Jenny remains uninterested in the conversation. She only agrees to help when So Me offers her money. In the evening, the three meet at So Me's house. She suggests they live together for a week or so until the plan comes to a conclusion. Jenny is not a fan of the idea, but agrees to do it anyway. But then, she is told that she will have to go to school as Lisa to teach the bullies a lesson. 
Jenny dropped out of school a year ago. To her, no amount of money is worth going to school again. She refuses to cooperate and storms out of the apartment. A few minutes later, she receives a video in a group chat. The video is of Lisa getting bullied. A group of girls tear her clothes, shove her to the ground, and kick her repeatedly, while a girl with an obnoxious laugh films everything. This makes Jenny so mad that she returns to the apartment and calls Lisa a coward. The video reminds Lisa of the traumatic night and makes her hyperventilate. Seeing her twin in such a condition, Jenny cannot help but feel bad for her. With much determination, she asks Somi where she can find the girl with the obnoxious laugh. The following day, she goes to school as Lisa. Her classmates notice the evident change in her behavior, but no one pays much attention to her. That is, until the group of bullies enters the classroom. The bully, Nayan, excitedly sits on Jenny's table and calls her cute for returning to school. Because of her laugh, Jenny realizes that Nyon is the girl in the video and the one who made everyone else bully Lisa. When the bully starts getting handsy, Jenny slaps her to the ground with a single blow. She then grabs her by the hair and sits on top of her, asking her to laugh again. Following that, she shoots a video of her while choking her simultaneously. Her bully friends can do nothing but retreat in fear. They only stop when Miss Lee interferes. She takes them to a private room to discipline them, but Jenny isn't someone who obeys teachers. When she and Miss Lee are alone, she approaches her with a pen, subtly threatening to stab her. Miss Lee stammers in fear as Jenny calls her out for being unfair to Lisa. Later that day, Jenny returns home and shows Lisa the video of Nyan. Lisa doesn't know how to feel about it because she doesn't support violence, even when it's projected towards her biggest bully. Somi warns Jenny to not do anything of such sort again because it might get her sister in trouble. She should have seen the stabby pen scene. The next day is the twins' birthday. They get themselves a cake and bond for the first time in their lives. Lisa tells Jenny how hard her life has been because she never got any kind of love from her parents. Jenny sympathizes with her since life in poverty with her mother has also not been ideal. The next morning, Jenny is asleep, so Lisa decides to go to school on her own. She believes that since Nyon was taught a lesson, she won't mess with her again. At school, Nyon's mother is with the principal, discussing a way to transfer Lisa to another school. The woman is afraid that she will try to take revenge on her daughter and wants her gone as soon as possible. A corrupt principal assures her they will take care of the situation. Meanwhile, Lisa overhears their conversation from the doorway and runs to the bathroom in tears. There, she bumps into Nyan before locking herself inside a stall. Nyan, who has been wanting to take revenge, dumps a bucket of water on her. Oh, snap. Lisa returns home wet and falls to the ground in exhaustion. Somi helps her while Jenny glows red in anger. She immediately calls Nyan and asks her to come to the mountain if she doesn't want the video of her beating up Lisa on the internet. Scared to be convicted of bullying, Nyan does as told. When she reaches the mountain, Jenny hits her on the head and knocks her out. Upon regaining consciousness, she finds her hands and legs tied and her mouth taped. Jenny removes the tape from her mouth and forcefully makes her drink a full bottle of water. Then she brings out another bottle filled with acid. Nyan cries for her life, which only makes Jenny laugh harder. She pours the acid dangerously close to her face, but promises not to kill her. By now, Nyan can hardly breathe and is crying hysterically. Jenny unties her legs and tells her to run away if she wants to stay alive. The bully takes the chance, but falls a few meters away. Just then, Lisa arrives at the scene and tries to free Nyan because she doesn't want any more people to get hurt. Seconds later, Somi follows and is shocked at the scene. She scolds Jenny for losing her temper and calls an ambulance for Nyan. In the following scene, Jenny is getting interrogated by the police. Since no one actually saw her with the victim, she is only a suspect. So Mia arrives and asks the officers to let her go for the time being. The officers decide to wait until Nyan gains consciousness and lets them go. Outside, Jenny claims that she does not regret her actions in the least and would do it again if she had the chance. A disappointed So Mi leaves her alone and returns home. Right after, Nyan's mother attacks Jenny, calling her names. Jenny smugly mocks the lady and asks her to laugh like her daughter. While arguing, she also slips that what she did was only a payback. The officers realize that she is in fact the culprit. When Mr. Kim calls her by Lisa's name, she lashes out and claims that the Lisa he is looking for is at home. Later, Mr. Kim and his fellow officer are driving back home, but Kim cannot get the thought of Jenny out of his mind. He has also noticed a significant change in her behavior since she was in the hospital. Suspecting that she has a doppelganger, he drives to her house to check. 
However, on reaching the place, he finds it empty. Just then, he gets a call from the hospital, informing him that Nyan has gained consciousness. She is blabbering about someone else being on the scene when she was attacked. A flashback shows us that Jenny was alone when Nyan was lying on the ground in the mountains. In fact, Jenny, Lisa, and So Me are all the same person. Till now, every time Lisa was talking to either of them, she was only talking to herself. She never had a twin sister. After being bullied, she was so alone and stranded that she fantasized about having someone who cared for her. Soon, the fantasy changed into obsessiveness, and she developed a multiple personality disorder. Meanwhile, So Me is a guidance officer and the only person who helped Lisa, but she never met Lisa at the hospital. Lisa imagined her being there to tackle loneliness and eventually added her to her personalities. The court finds out what exactly is wrong with Lisa, and she ends up in therapy. She drops out of school and focuses on her mental health. We see a clip of her talking to a therapist about her past trauma in great detail. She has finally healed from it. In the last scene, the real Somi drops her at the airport. Lisa is flying to a different city to start a new life. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.